This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today I'm going to show you guys how fast the new EL6 battery is charging. So I did a test last year with the EL6 and uh, it was weird because on that charging session I would get around 165 something kilowatt and then it dropped to only 125 for a little bit and then it spiked up again and then it dropped again and then it slowly ramped up to around 140, 30. It was weird. Uh, I think I have a video also from back, back then, but then when I borrowed the EL6 recently to test it, it charged a lot faster. Let's see how fast it is then. So I compared it again EL8 because they actually use the exact same batteries, the 100B battery, and then also MEB, it's just generic. This, okay, for the record, it was uh, a Ford Explorer, I think, but it uses the 82 kilowatt hour. And you see that the, the MEB charges faster 182 kilowatt something and it's only an 82 kilowatt hour versus 100 kilowatt hour but the el6 which is the exact same battery but just on a different car with maybe better cooling charges a lot faster 241 and you know this is just 400 volt architecture and it can go at those speeds even at 30 percent yeah but the el6 on the other hand seems to have a lot nicer and flatter curve which just slowly goes up uh probably there's a, a a current limit yeah i think it was uh, the the limit was um 400 amps no, no no more 480 amps yeah 480 amps and then as the voltage goes up then the power goes up that's why it slowly goes faster and faster but look at that even at 40 percent we're taking maximum speed 178 kilowatt on spec neo claims it's 180 kilowatt you will see it briefly for not too long but i mean it's close enough on like tesla where you get 250 for a split second or you actually never get it with the lg battery but still the mev platform is ahead because it is a smaller battery so it charges faster the c rate is higher on the mev platform versus the el6 but still very impressive now you see the meb starts uh, throttling uh, more and more but the el6 uh okay now also the el6 start throttling but it could maintain that impressive speed for a very long time but also uh, the el8 oh, starts throttling but it's ahead we'll see eventually in the charging curve how these these two uh, compare but uh, MEB is still ahead, almost hitting 70%, but you see it goes slower and slower. It's about to ramp down to around 100 kilowatt on the MEB, whereas the EL6 at 70% can still take over 140 kilowatt. Very impressive. Wait, I, I just realized the EL8 is actually in the lead. Wow, EL8 charges so fast. It's wonderful. And this is not even the latest and greatest from Mio. Just wait until the new ES8 third generation comes out. 900 volt architecture, 600 kilowatt. <laughs> the EL8 hit 80% after, well, we don't have a timer here. It was around 24, 25. No, no, I think it was 25 minutes. Well, if you are a ninja, you can look at the clock yeah, and see how long we've been charging. But okay, uh, MEB did hit 80% before the EL6, but EL6 was right behind. And even now at 80%, the EL6 can still maintain pretty nice speed. It means that, uh, you know, you can actually utilize the whole battery or more of the battery. Many cars, they advertise with quite fast speed up until 80%. Okay, that's great. But then uh, many cars, they tend to, uh, well, the speed tends to plummet past 80%. So it becomes not that great anymore but here in the el6 seems that you could even stretch it to about 90 percent before you leave huh that's not too bad in it okay meb is about to hit 90 percent right around there right there yes uh right, almost on par with the el8 el8 is still the fastest here but the el6 is right behind so okay in that regard it's not too bad but i mean we are still talking about 100 kilowatt hour here in the in the el yeah okay uh, I didn't uh, record too long. I, I kind of stopped a bit sudden there, but uh, let's look at the charging curve instead. So here you see the EL8. It has this nice flat curve and uh, the nice flat uh, 230 something kilowatt. And then it has a little dip here. And well, uh, it seems to kind of follow the red line here, which is the EL6. But I'll compare it against also here, the blue line. This was the old session from last year. And you see it had some weird dip. And then it just slowly went up. So I don't know what's up with that. But apparently Neo must have done something because now it charges a lot faster. And then the Ford Explorer has this curve. Uh, I've seen this curve many, many times. If we actually take a bunch of cars 
and maybe instead of looking at kilowatt you, you instead convert it to C rate we see that many cars they have this similar curve which is probably the healthy way of charging the battery right not just go flat like a fat e-tron uh, but what I'm saying is that it could seem like the potential in the in the 100 kilowatt hour battery is more like this and if you try to make a line here roughly right then it could follow the the, the yellow line but it could mean that the EL6 here is not utilizing the, the full potential of the, the second gen uh, 100 kilowatt hour battery. But it's charging faster and I start wondering um, why is the EL8 charging faster than EL6? Is it because of a software thing? Because when I did 1000 kilometer challenge with the two, these two cars, I couldn't really hear crazy cooling going on on both of them. Or maybe it was going a little bit harder on the EL8 versus the EL6, but it wasn't crazy loud. So I just wonder if they differentiate these two cars simply so that when you get the more expensive EL8, you get also faster charging versus the EL6. But as you guys have seen in the 1000 km challenge, the difference in time is not that much. I think it was around 10, 10 minutes only. If you do a 1000 km challenge with without battery soap and you only charge it. So, I mean, the EL6, okay, it's not the industry leading fastest charging car out there, but uh, I'm quite impressed that you can actually go quite flat and and actually charge to, let's say, 65%, which I did in the 1000 km challenge, or I don't remember exactly. No, no, I think I went for actually 70%. You don't have to charge to only 50%, which is usually the case for a Tesla, right? That's where you get the best speed. You can actually utilize more of the battery and it has a nice and flat curve. So I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.